Hey everybody, welcome to a new Amazing Max uh, tutorial. And we are still going on with uh, the shaders. I didn't forget about our GL3 shaders uh, tutorials. In fact, I always wanted to go on and uh, now it's the time. So, this is the status of the patch and the shader as we left it. We are creating a shader to apply lighting to objects. And uh, as for now, we are using the Fong shading algorithm to light up objects. Now, this is the patch. Uh, this is the GGL shader object with our shader inside. For uh, being more comfortable, I open the shader on Visual Studio, just to have the syntax highlighting and auto completion and so on. And uh, this is what we got. So we got the, um, the shader, is performing the lighting calculation in the vertex shader and passing the light color, so the final color of the object to the fragment shader that then multiplies it with the texture color uh, in order to have the, uh, objects to which we can even apply a texture. Uh, for example, let me get this video here and put it here. So we can see, for example, this object is using the video as a texture. Oh, let me actually put the polymath zero because otherwise it will be a bit annoying. So I load the video here and this object is using the video as a texture. The duck is using his own uh, duck texture and uh, the plane is just a plane using a white texture as a texture. So, um, until now we have processed the lighting calculation in the vertex shader, while in this video we are going to perform the calculation, we are going to move the calculation from the vertex shader into the fragment shader. So, all the calculation is not going to be performed anymore per vertex, but per pixel. So, what does this mean? It means, basically, that until now we are just interpolating the colors between the vertices. But if we move the lighting calculation to the fragment shader, then uh, the lighting calculation is going to be performed per fragment, so per pixel of the shape, which means that the, the lighting is going to result in a much smoother light. You are not going to see anymore this kind of uh, polygon uh, lighting thing on the object itself. You are going to see a smooth light and it's going to look in general much better. So why didn't we do this from the beginning? Just because I wanted to uh, start with the vertex shader, see how to perform the lighting calculation, see how this looks like, and then when we are ready to move the whole thing to the fragment shader. So this is what we are going to do in this tutorial. So, let's go. Let's go and inside our shader thing. And uh, what we are going to move to the fragment shader is all this stuff here. So the only thing that is going to remain inside the vertex shader is the transformation of the vertices and the normal into the into the eye space or camera space. And then we are going to pass uh, the position and the normal to the fragment shader in order for the lighting calculation to happen. So let's start to move stuff from the vertex into the fragment shader. So all this thing uh, we are going to leave apart from the light intensity, which we are going to move to the fragment shader. So let's go down here. And after the dark texture, we can put the light intensity. So actually we should not even call this uh, dark texture because this is a bit too specific to actually to the dark object. So let's simply call it uh, like texture um, zero. Let's see if this is a good name. Uh, let's actually call it diffuse texture. So let's actually call it diffuse texture. So we have to change this name here. And we have to change it here when we say the bind parameter and the parameter declaration. So this is where we have to change it. And of course, we also have to change the light intensity, uh, the, the binding and the, the binding of the light intensity parameter, because uh, from now on it was on the vertex shader, so we have to move it on the fragment shader. So FP. Okay, so let's see what else we need to move. This thing can remain here, the light source parameter we can move, but before we do that, 
I just found out that I had an error inside this uh, light source parameter structure. So we should add under spot cut off, we should add spot cause, cause cut off. So the cosine of the spot cut off, okay, this we forgot and this is very important uh, because otherwise when we try to um, use multiple lights within the shader this is not going to work if we have a wrong structure. So we need to add those properties of the light source parameter structure exactly as they are here. Otherwise the shader will not work when we try to use multiple lights. Uh, by the way this is also wrong, we should not put any parentheses here. Just the one is okay. So let's get the struct light source parameter, let's take it, cut it and bring in the fragment shader so we can put it right under the uniform. Let's go up again, let's take the light model parameters, cut and put them below the uh, light source parameter structure. Then let's take the fine number of light and the layout for the lighting parameters, let's cut that and let's put it down under light model parameters. Then let's go up. Let's take material parameters and front material parameters. Let's cut these both these structures and let's put them under here. So the structure and the uniform, sorry. And this should be it. Okay, very well. Now we're going to modify the input and the output structures. So let's get rid of this flat vector for thing that um, uh, we just used to show how basically flat shading works. So we are not going to use it anymore, so we can cut it. We are not going to use it anymore the light intensity because this we are going to calculate directly inside of the fragment shader. So this we can cut out both from the input struct in the fragment shader and from the uh, output struct here. And uh, okay, so what we need to pass to the fragment shader is the I vertex position. All right, so the I vertex position is going to be a back three, and let's call it actually I position. Then we need another vector three for the normal, so I normal, and uh, or maybe let's call it I vertex exactly. And then let's call it I normal. Perfect. So here we were using a, a function to get basically the position of an, in uh, I space of the normal, uh, the vertexes and the texture coordinates. So this function is called here inside the main function. We actually don't need even to create those, uh, those temporary variables. We can simply use the JIT out I normal and the JIT out I vertex and I text card. Um, yeah, exactly. We need also to pass the I text card. So this is going to be JIT out dot I text card zero. Now, okay, so this stuff we are not going to calculate anymore. So this we can cut out, this text code thing. From the main function we can actually cut out these two lines, can cut out these two lines and put them in the main function of the fragment shader. Exactly, we can put them here. And let's just leave it like this for the moment. Now let's go back in the vertex shader and let's cut out the fong model function. So the wall fong model function, we take it and we cut it out. Let's bring it inside the fragment shader and let's put it before the main, let's put it before, uh, let's put it after the JIT input. Vertex thing. Uh, actually, let's put it also after the declaration of the output back for color. Okay, so we are almost there. We're almost there. So what else we need to bring from the vertex shader to the fragment shader? Let's see. So we got the structure, uh, the output structure. Oh, we need, of course, to modify the input structure in the fragment shader. So let's go in the fragment shader 
and G per vertex input we need a vertex I normal and texture chord. Okay, so now we can start to check which kind of errors do we get from uh, uh, from the max cons in the max console. So let's see. Uh, light shade I text chord is not member of strat G per vertex. Okay, so let's see. I text chord zero is not a member. And of course it's not a member, it's not called I text chord zero, it's simply called it's simply called text chord zero, which is okay. We can simply call it text chord zero. Okay, so let's see what we get now. Define variable duck texture. That's right, we didn't call it the uh, duck texture anymore, we called it diffuse texture. Exactly. So we declare it as a uniform uh, here on the um, beginning of the fragment shader. So this is called diffuse texture now and not anymore duck texture. Okay, so let's see what we get. Undefined variable JIT out. Undefined variable JIT out. Why? This should be actually the name of our structure here. Where are we using this? Uh, probably inside the uh, function here. Yes, is it here in the main function of the fragment shader? We actually... Mm, we actually could create this as a vector for and call it light intensity. Simply assign it the value of the Fong model calculation. And uh, yeah, so this is it. Then let's see. I light position is the position of the first light, which is the only light that we got at the moment. And um, I position is of course wrong because we need to use now here jit in dot i vertex and jit in dot i normal. So it seems to work. So it seems that we transferred our light calculation from the vertex shader to the fragment shader. So as you can see now. The light is much smoother on the object. Let me actually let me actually show you how it was before. So let's do like this. Let me create another shader here. Let's bring all this stuff down. Let's just create another shader and call it Fong Shader Vertex. And I created a, I took the shader as it was before. I call it. I called it vertex calc, I believe. All right, and uh, now we can tell to the duck, for example, to use the other shader. So let's say shader fong shader. I cannot write vertex. So let's see. Exactly. So this is the vertex lighting calculation. So the lighting calculation done per vertex with only the interpolation of the final color of the pixel done through from the vertex to the fragment shader. And now this is the calculation executed on the fragment shader, this one, which basically interpolates the normals and the vertex position from the vertex shader to the fragment shader and performs the lighting calculation per fragment, so per pixel that creates the shape and in this way we have a much smoother lighting as you can see this is vertex this is fragment okay so this is pretty much uh, a big difference so most of the time you want to use the lighting calculation per made in a per fragment way the only disadvantage of this uh, back in the days was that uh, the lighting calculation must be performed per fragment which means basically it could be a bit heavier than perform it only once per vertex. But since we are in 2020, our computers are powerful enough, we can afford to perform this lighting calculation per fragment. So there we are, we moved a bit further on the ladder of uh, shading programming. We know one thing more, we know how to create this uh, shader inside Max, which is pretty cool. And uh, in the next videos, we are going to see how to add multiple lights to these, uh, to these shaders. So how we can calculate the light when we add uh, uh, multiple light sources in the scene. Because for the moment it's only going to work with one light. Because as you can see we are only using the position from one light. The first light we have 
in the scene. So, this was it for this tutorial, thank you for following, so if you liked the video you can subscribe to the channel, leave a like, and if you really liked the video and you would like to see a bit more of this uh, shader stuff, uh, taking a look at patches that uh, involve shaders, uh, jitter, mathematics, uh, uh, physics, all this kind of stuff, you can join my Patreon community and uh, support the channel and get access to all this stuff. So, in any case, thank you for watching and see you soon with the next videos. Ciao!